are doing it again. We are back at it. We are literally back at it with the exact same pattern just because I couldn't get it out of my system and I wanted to zhuzh it. So if you guys aren't familiar with me, I love to zhuzh a three yard quilt and all that means is I step outside of the rules of the pattern. So you get what you get here. I might use more than three yards. I don't know. And I'm not exactly sure what the plan is for this. I took you guys with me shopping. We pulled these fabrics together and these two here, these are Kona's. The rest of these are African prints from Kina. I get so many requests to do something with Kina's fabrics. So many requests. So here you guys go. Three yard quilts, Kina quilts, and it's zhuzhed all the things. I'm going to approach this quilt differently than I did the other one. I walked you through how to do the pattern mosaic as it was intended, as I wrote it, just straight simple. This time, all bets are off. I want each mosaic tile to be different. So we're gonna see what happens with that. <laughs> we're gonna see, we're gonna see what that means exactly. But like I told you, I'm gonna approach it differently. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with fabric number three. I want this to be the background. I know it's brown. I know I don't do caramel. We're doing it. This is how I feel right now. I'm going to cut out everything as it was intended for fabric number three. This one here is going to be a bonus fabric. This is going to be a border. I'm going to bring this in for the border. I don't know how much of it I'm going to bring in. I only have a yard, so I have to make good decisions. I'm going to make this a border. These African fabrics will be your mosaic tiles. I think I want each one of these to be its own tile. This one or this one will have two, and then we'll see. We'll see, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you. But first things first, we're gonna grab fabric number three, and we're gonna cut it just as the instructions say, and then we were just gonna go slowly and build our mosaic so that we don't get confused, okay? For the pattern, we are using my book, Curve Appeal. That's me, Matt Cox. The mosaic pattern is this one right here. It might be everyone's fave in this book. I can't wait to see how you guys do it during the holiday season. Um, I think it's going to be really popular. So I have acrylic templates. You do not need to use these acrylic templates. But yes, I have them. They do make it easier, especially if you're going to want to do these patterns over and over again. I just like to cut with them. You do not need them in order to complete this but I have them and I have them available for you all. You guys can get these through cut once. I will leave them in the description bar. You can buy all of them or just a few of them. This particular pattern uses two sets. So you can buy just the two sets. You can buy all three. It's up to you. I think the set is incredibly affordable for, for six pieces. You get them for 40 bucks. So I am using my templates, but you don't have to. They have the templates for you to trace in the back of the book. All right. So like I told you, we are going to start with strip color fabric number three. And we are going to get busy from there. Now, it, the first thing it's telling me is how many to cut of pattern D. And these are very, very simple to cut. I'm just laying it down on my strips. You would do the same thing if you had a paper template. You're just going to lay it down on there. And I'm going to get in here. And I'm going to cut like that. And then I'm going to rotate it. So I got two right there. Then we can rotate it. We've got it butted right up against this fabric after we rotated it. Now we're just going to come around this curve. 
you've got two options. You can butt your fabric, uh, um, your ruler right up against this, hold it, remove it, or you could have just rotated it. It's up to you. Now we have another two pieces. Now this fabric can be used either way. So you don't have to worry about any directionality or anything like that. These are mirror images of these shapes, so you're fine. You're fine. Don't be worried about whether or not the fabric is facing up or down. You, you're good. You've got this. And don't forget that in the back of the book, it tells you how many of each shape you can get from a strip, okay? So don't worry about it. We have thought of all the things for you. And they're like, how are you going to get that from that? It's enough fabric in there. See, we have enough room even for that little fold there. We've got room. Hold it. Easy peasy. This is not, this is not difficult. If I can do these, anybody can. And now I just need to take off that fold. I'm going to butt this ruler right up next to it so that I don't have to rotate. My ruler is a non-slip ruler, so I don't have to worry about it. And there we have our last two from this strip. See? Easy. Now, one of the things that can get a little confusing are all of the letters that are in this pattern, but it's not a problem, especially if you have these. These are pins that have numbers on one side and letters on the other. We are doing all the way to G today, so I've got all of my pins that I need in my pin cushion. This pin cushion is from Dolls and Their Girls on Etsy. I love my pin cushions so much. So... I like to have these. I think these are expensive for what they are. However, I use them so much. I'm happy to have them. If you buy these, make sure you're doing it when your local quilt store has a sale. If your Fat Quarter Shop, Missouri Star, when they're having a sale, that's when you get these. If not, just write down some letters on a piece of paper, on a post-it. It is not that big of a deal, but it is imperative, I think, for this particular quilt block, uh, quilt, that you label it. So I just cut this. This is using pattern D, but and it's for block D, which works out, but sometimes you're using a different letter pattern for something else. So I'm just going to mark these so I know what position those will be used in, okay? That's all. Another trick and tip. Know how many you need to get from your strip and know how many your strip can yield i'm just saying that's a that's an advanced trick but everybody um who does this will probably be doing it this way so i know that from this strip i can get eight of this particular shape we told you that in the pattern that's and then i know how many i need which is also in the pattern so I have frippled up my fabric because we are power cutting. And that's another reason why this goes so quickly. So now I have four of this shape and I can just put it to the side. And I know that this is scrap. So I just, you can't do that with all of them, but I, this is why we tell you, read your pattern before you start, just read through it. So that way you can make good quilty decisions and cut with courage easily. I've decided I'm going to break this up into mosaics, which I'm calling these shapes here. And that's going to be A, B, C, D, and E. So for A, I've decided that actually A and E are going to be the same. It's going to be out of this fabric that I have right here. Um, yes, we're going to do this fabric. And I'm going to work on just that section. I'm not going to think about anything else except for that section and that's how I'm going to approach all of these so that I can make sure that I'm not making any mistakes. So if you look into your pattern, you will see a row assembly section and that row assembly section is really going to be your bread and butter. So for the first row, I know that I need a whole block of this and then a block of this with a B piece, right? So that's how I'm going to work it. I'm just going to go slowly block by block for just that section. 
So I'm gonna do row one, row two, and row three all right now. I'm gonna do all the pieces for that and I'm gonna put those together and put those to the side. And then I'm gonna work on the one that work comes right next to it. So then I'm gonna work on this guy so that I can start assembling rows. But we're gonna go really slow. It's gonna be super simple, um, I believe. But we're just gonna go block by block by block. When I did the other one, I was able to just follow the directions as they were, but we're not gonna be able to do that for this, not this way. So I'm gonna work on this fabric right now. African fabric comes folded in thirds. Um, so you're gonna have to utilize it a little differently. So how I'm going to manage this is, I mean, of course you could fold it up in half like this and then, you know, work with it. But African fabric is usually longer. So sometimes you can't work with it in the same way. However, this one is, there we go. There we go, I can manage it here. All right, I've had some that are much longer. All right, we can we can work with this. And this is just about, it is a yard of fabric. So we're good. I'm gonna press this this way and work with it as I usually would. But be careful because again, some of them are much longer and so you won't be able to manage it. This looks good to me. I'm gonna make it happen. I'm just gonna press out some of these wrinkles really quickly. I haven't done any sewing and that's because I've decided to work on the B mosaic also at the same time, just so that I can do full rows as opposed to do like four blocks. I just thought, eh, I don't wanna do it that way. So I am going to cut four the for the first block all I needed was one strip I'm gonna cut two strips for this and and that should be plenty so all I need are two strips for this one and I'll be able to get all the blocks that I need which means that really you only need probably no you need more than well, no, you need a little more than three eighths of a yard. So you probably need to do, if you're doing it like I am doing it. I wonder if I could get a fat quarter. No, I wouldn't chance that. I would try to do a half a yard for, for them. There's something very cool happening with this palette. You guys know the drill. Once you really learn this pattern, you will be cooking through it. This still isn't going together as fast as it did the first time that I did it, but we're good, we're fine. I do these exactly the same way, even though they're slightly different shapes. And I'm gonna take you guys through it as soon as I grab my handy dandy glue pen and my pens. I'll show you exactly how I do this. I have a bunch of Teflon non-stick sheets that I just keep around. And for this, I'm going to, again, like I said, do it the exact same way I've done all the others. I like to find center. And I'm gonna take that and just give it a little crease. And we'll do the same thing with this African fabric. African fabric, very difficult to tell which side is up and which side isn't. I think it does not really matter. So I do that, find the centers, right sides together, and curves make a weird shape, but geometry is real, so the math all works out. I'm gonna put a quick pin in there. Then I'm gonna take this glue pin, this glue pin, a full one will certainly do your entire quilt. This, I'm on my third quilt and one of them was not a three yard quilt it was a big one and I still haven't had to change the glue stick so don't worry about that and I use a generous amount and I just go around those edges I grab this end I stick it to this fabric 
and give it a little press. I just give it a little hold there and that's all it takes. And then you just smooth it out. I might go from the center or the side, it doesn't matter. You are just trying to smooth this out and stick it down. And a little pinch will work and you're just smoothing it out. Smooth, smooth, smooth. And once you get it smooth, move on to the other side. Yes, it's an extra step, but my curves come out nicely. I don't really have to worry about my curves not behaving. You want to stay in that quarter inch margin. Stay in the quarter inch. Make sure that matches up. Give it a little pinch. And smooth it out. Do not be scared to stretch your fabric a little bit to make it all smooth. Don't be scared of it. After you do about two of these and you realize you really do get to stretch your fabric on that angle, you'll be cooking. All right. And that's what it'll look like on the back. We're gonna take this over to the sewing machine and do them all a quarter of an inch from that edge. I do the exact same thing with this shape. It's got a different shape. It's more of a traditional drunkard's path, but I do the same thing, find center, grab one of these guys, Pull your nail on it, find center. Place this on the top, match them up. Throw a pin in there. Then the most important part are these edges over here. And I just drag a little glue, staying in that quarter inch seam allowance. You start with the edge. You want to make sure that this edge, the edges are parallel to one another. That's the important part. And then give it a little pinch. And then just smooth it out. And walk it on down. Till it's smooth and it's catching. And there we have it. Do the same thing to the other side. And we'll just put those, make sure they're parallel to one another. And perfect, perfect, perfect. And then just pinch them closed. It just kind of melts together. And toss it to the side and keep going. Very, very, very simple to sew these. All these are sewn the exact same. I'm going to grab a stiletto for funsies. And we are going to start with this bottom shape on the bottom, but parallel to the edge of your machine. We're going to creep this on up. And just make sure that it's parallel. Do not worry about anything that is happening to the left or to the right of the needle. You just want what is front of what's in front of the needle to be smooth. We're going to put our needle down. And I'm going to just pull that back there. And we're going to start sewing. I, of course, sew with the guard on because that's who I am. And I'm just going to make sure that everything is smooth in front of that needle. It's going to bunch to the left. No worries, I'm keeping the fabric pushed up against that guard. As I rotate it, I'm gonna grab Mr. Pin. 
I'm going to keep smoothing. I'm going to step, I'm going to do a little adjustment here. And we're going to keep going. We're going to smooth what's in front. There it is, smooth. We are going to smooth. Keep it smooth. And there you go. Cut that thread. Let's take a look. Looks pretty good to me. Looks like it will work. Looks good that way. And then I will show you how we press these. I'll show you this one too. It's a slightly different shape, but nothing changes. We're starting with this bottom shape, the larger tri the larger um, curve on the bottom. There we go. Keeping it pushed up against that guide. Just worried about what's in front of that needle. Pull that out. If you don't have a guard, you're just making sure that that fabric stays lined up with the edge of your foot. Just sew that quarter inch seam. Looks good to me. Looks good back here. And then I'll show you how we press it. I want to show you something. I have got this laid out. Nothing has been pressed yet. But I want you to see that these are just the first two rows. When you butt these up against one another, you want to be sure that one of your seams is going this way and one is going that way. Especially if you use my glue trick, you're not going to be opening seams after you've glued them. That's just double work that we don't have to do. So if you're doing this quilt without zhuzhing it, Half of your ones that look exactly like this should be pressed in one direction. Half of them should be pressed in the other direction. I'm going to show you what that looks like. And same thing with this shape right here. So all I mean by that is that this one, I'm going to press the seam going that way. And I'm going to flip it over and make sure it's open all the way. I'm gonna need to hit this with a little bit of a uh, magic spray. But there you see it, oh, that's hot, so hot. And that's going that way. And we want one that is pressed with the seam coming this way. And we'll flip that over and just give it a nice pretty press. And that way, when we go to put these rows together, They, they're going in opposite directions. See, they're nesting. Beautifully, beautifully nested, right? You can feel it. I'll never forget the first time I heard somebody say, you can feel it. I was like, I can't feel it. And then you wanna do the same thing for these two. You want one going one way and one going the other. And of course, I, I would be pressing this at my table, my ironing board. But, you know, I've got my cutie patootie little ironing board, which is always a showstopper at a class because it's so cute. Oh, it's cute. This is the seam going this way. And then we're going to tuck this guy on this one. 
and we're gonna make this one come this way. Again, I could definitely be using a larger <laughs> ironing board, but this one is so cute. And the other one is way over like five steps to the left, so hey. All right. Now you can see that these seams are going in the opposite directions and they will sit next to one another just like this and they will sit like this here. Okay. So just be sure that you're doing that. Okay, this is coming out cute. I like what's happening here. I'm going to go out ahead and press these properly and get them all sewn together and then start on my next two rows. So I imagine this looks a little weird. So this is all that I have cut out in regards to the focal parts. Remember, I've cut out all the background. And so this last row here, and I call myself working in rows of two, I haven't pressed this one yet. That one has been pressed. It has not been sewn on yet. It could, I could sew that on, that's fine. But I need to start on the next mosaic right here. So I'm gonna put all this to the side and then pull out the next colorway and start cutting that just by looking at the row assembly diagram. That's all I'm gonna focus on is that next one. All right, y'all, I finished up this quilt. It took me two days to do this one. This one was a little different just because each mosaic is different, a different fabric, and then I added in this border fabric. Things to think about. When I do these curves, when I sew the curves together, like when I finish after I've already constructed the curve and I come back to sew it together, I use a voluptuous four um, a quarter inch just to make sure that I'm catching what I need to catch, right? That's one of the tips. Another one is, like I said, cut the background fabric, do all your number three, and then fill in like you're coloring in your mosaics. If you wanna do multiple colors, each of these is a different colorway, which I think is so cool. This colorway really is dynamic. It's gonna be one of my favorites for sure. I think it looks good. Other than that, it's simple. This is very, very simple. If you want to see me put together the innards, check out the live video that I did. I, you see me putting this together as I am chatting and talking with everyone. Remember that you can fast forward through those or just put it on mute, whatever you need to do if you just want to see the techniques. But other than that, this is a cutie patootie. I'm liking it. Let me know if you guys like this in African Fabrics. I already know everybody's going to do it in holiday fabrics, and I'm looking forward to seeing that, but I figured I'd try something different with the African fabrics. All right, I will catch y'all on the next one. Next week, I'm going to let you guys breathe. No curves, I don't think. <laughs> Maybe another three-yard quilt. I don't know. We have options. And then we will come back to my book. We are going to do Twist and Shout, and that's going to be a really fun twist with Terribly Rad. All right, I'll catch y'all on the next one. Bye-bye.